it's time to revisit a deck that took vintage by storm just a few months ago. Here's Beseech the Mirror. All right, welcome back, Vintage Gamers. More Eternal Weekend offline testing. Today's date is Sunday, 11-5. Uh, only a couple weeks out from Eternal Weekend. This will probably be the fourth off-stream video of testing that I've done. I just got back from a paper vintage tournament in New York City with 30 players. Uh, I played Oath in that event and top aided, but I wasn't very happy with my Oath deck. Um, mostly the play patterns of the deck and its inconsistency make it very hard to appreciate. Uh, a deck that did very well at that tournament, and in fact won that tournament, as well as winning a prelim and a vintage challenge in the same weekend, was Beseech the Mirror. Uh, Ryan Burnt Taco, as well as Beekeeper, all had very good performances with this deck. I was hoping there were going to be more innovation inside this archetype, uh, but it seems the only person who's really changing the deck list very much is Sean, Dissolutionist. Uh, so this deck actually looks very, very similar to the last list that I published uh, back when I was working on Besiege myself. So uh, maybe that's good enough and, and there's just some small tweaks that need to be made, uh, but maybe we need to do some thinking about uh, just its strengths and weaknesses. So Besiege the Mirror is inherently a pretty all-in combo deck and vintage. It is looking to... Bargain cast Beseech, and most of the time get Yogwell to put together enough mana to, to make a Tendrils of Agony Storm kill. Uh, however, you can also do things like Beseech for a Tinker, uh, using your Tinker's Bargain to get yourself a, a Bulls of Citadel and combo that way. You have a very strong plan B and C plans with Urza Saga, uh, making Constructs, as well as finding Manifold Key and Time Vault. Uh, and then you also have, you know, you have some alternative paths with Necropotence Shieldred, which is a card I really like in this deck, but not everyone was playing, uh, as well as the One Ring. So, uh, Lorien Revealed helps you fix your mana. You have a Moxin Mana Base. You have five Underground Seas with the Watery Grave. It all works pretty well. Um, the deck is kind of weak to you know anti-combo cards, anti-artifact cards, and Null Rod, anti-graveyard cards with something like uh, Ley Lines or, or even Cages. Cages is a really good one because Cages is going to stop um, stop your Yogwill, but it will also stop your Citadel, so that's a pretty strong one. So my biggest problem with this deck uh, is that I, I think it holds a little too hard to interaction, but the big upside of this deck is you get a lot of free wins. It's, a, it's probably the strongest Tinker deck in the format, um, the best deck at using Tinker, which makes it uh, definitely an intriguing choice for me. Uh, I have gone and checked out lots of different Tinker decks at this point. Grixis, Esper, Breach. Um, and I think I haven't really found a deck more suited to replacing Pio in my mind than this one. So we're going to play it through a league today and see if I can shake off some of the uh, bad feelings that this deck gives me while playing and give myself another viable choice going into Eternal Weekend. I'll see you for round one. Are you interested in weekly vintage metagame recommendations? Do you want to see your deck list played on my channel? Or maybe you are just looking for the best way to support my vintage content. Make sure you check out the Patreon link in the description below. Let's battle. Okay, here we go. Round one, Vintage League with Beseech. Try to narrate as much as I can here uh, because I am no longer entertaining a live audience. This hand is obviously incredible. Um... You might even be supposed to... Ooh, interesting. So my opponent has revealed Chancellor, which means they're either on Mono White or Oops All Spells, with Mono White being the main uh, possible one. Uh, so I have options here where I can either play my Underground Sea, pay one, get a Pearl going, uh, get a Ruby in play, cycle for another land, uh, but not cast anything on turn one. Or I could throw my Ruby or Pearl into the Chancellor trigger, and then cast Ancestral on my turn. This will give me opportunities to cast a turn one Tinker, um, find Force of Will, etc., because my opponent is likely to try to play something taxing on turn one that will make our turn two Tinker play a lot worse. 
However, I could, of course, like the, the problem is I can't cast Ancestral without throwing something away because if I try to, you know, play all my Muxin, then I will have to use my blue mana. So I think the answer for me is throw this Ruby into this Chancellor and then Ancestral, target myself. Didn't actually draw anything extremely strong, like a Force of Will would have been the best draw, but we did get an extra Moxin back, so that's nice. So I don't actually have any counter magic for my opponent's play. I will be able to get a land and go up to four mana. So I could play a Tinker through with Alia, but then there's problems associated with that. We'll see what opponent does. It's really bad. If I had a force, I could force this Black Lotus. I just don't have it. So drawing Flusterstorm and Mental Misstep is a very classic example of the problems inherent in... Being too anti-blue centric. My opponent has Athalia. So now my Citadel play is really bad. Um, they probably also have an initiative creature. Oh, they have... Now they... I'm just super dead. <laughs> so frustrating. Okay. Um, we're going to have to try to figure out a way to get a um, dress down probably. Or... Shade of Vapor probably doesn't do it. Probably need to find a way to get to a dress down so that we can tinker into a Citadel and still be happy. But when you keep a hand that's turn one tinker or turn one ancestral and you lose to mono white, not ideal. Not ideal. I'm super far away from casting anything really. Tinker is six mana. Torlarian is six mana. Uh, Lorian is six mana. My opponent has Athalia and I'm going to Peacekeeper on Tinker. Definitely a pretty frustrating part of this deck, but it is what it is. All right. Time Walk is a good draw. Let's just get a couple lands going. Uh, here, we hit a Talarian Academy here, so we can actually tinker through everything. Wow. Okay. Well, why am I complaining? My deck is broken. <laughs> uh, okay. So I, I, I am going to tinker away everything and just get a Citadel. Obviously, that doesn't play through... Hmm. I forgot I have a ring. Is there ever a world where a ring is better? Obviously, I don't get the anti, you know, the protection of everything here. Nah, a Citadel should be better even with Athalia in play. So Athalia means spells off my top cost one, but I have a Talarian Academy, so I can theoretically play through that a bit. If my opponent follows up with like an Archon of Emeria, then there's more of an issue. Looks like they're gonna follow up with a Talarian, uh, Wasteland on my Talarian Academy. Uh, this is good because it means they probably don't have the ability to play another creature this turn. So I'll take five. I guess that's another problem is I am currently taking five every turn, which makes my Citadel worse. The best thing I could see is just like a Duress Down on the top of my library. Let me try to combo off this turn. I hit a Vampiric Tutor. So if I pay one and play Vampiric Tutor... And then I play my whole yard with uh, pay one... For a... Oh, I don't play my whole yard. So if I pay one for a Vampiric Tutor and then pay one for a Yogwell, I can play my Talarian Academy, but then I can only make one mana with it to play Pearl, Ruby, Lotus Petal. It's just not that good yet. So maybe the answer is pay one for a Vamp, pay one for a Dress Down, and hopefully we can go through from there. Let's take a peek. Because we can't go for a chain, chain of vapor, because they could just chain our, our citadel back. So if we were to instead go, I mean, we could go for a one ring. We would vamp down to 12 and then one ring down to an eight. This doesn't seem very good. We could just vamp for a shieldren. My opponent has a, a one known card in Chancellor and two unknowns. I guess if they have a solitude. Shieldred ends up being pretty bad. Dress down. I mean, my deck is pretty good at playing off of the top, but there are definitely misses. I have a cycle, though. I think I'd like to see what we can do with a dress down. That's what I would like to see the most. I think Shieldred's an interesting choice, too, though. All right, so I'm going to go to 
this. I'm gonna play a dress down. Ring on top that we're gonna have to draw. Delta is not great, but we can play it. Soul ring down to nine. All right, beseech. That's gotta be lethal, right? Yeah. So now I can just beseech with bargain on my soul ring, and I can just get a yog will and replay my yard and tinker them or uh, uh, tendrils them. Dress down is such a broken card. I should have cast this dark ritual in response, but it's fine. It does not matter. Yeah. Um. Does not does not matter at all. Uh. Okay. Wow. That was impressive. Uh. I feel like I did top deck my way out of a very bad situation. Uh. With the time walk into Talarian Academy, cast a six mana tinker. They didn't have an archon, but it it all worked out. So. Really, really, we're really, really impressive from my deck to come back from there. So that's exciting. Pretty excited about that. All right, we have a portal that we can bring in. Uh, we have double basic that I want to bring in. We have dismember, cut down, and snuff out. So that's a lot of lot of different action. But of course, we know all the cards that are really bad here. One mental misstep, triple fluster storm, Gitaxium probe is pretty bad. I don't know if you would consider Shieldred to be bad. Excuse me. Uh, Necro looks pretty bad, right? Okay, that's pretty good. It's a nice mapping. Five, uh, four bad counter spells, Gitaxium Probe and Necro out for three removal, multiple lands, and a and a portal. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, so this one play, has a removal spell and plays an early shieldred. It has a saga. I think this is a pretty worthwhile keep. I'm down. Obviously, it's not like the most combo centric hand, but we have good answers. Thalia pitched a chrome box. Hmm. Something pitched a Chrome Mox. White Plume pitched a Chrome Mox. Strip Mine. Wow. They had to play so many things. Archon. So my opponent went pretty all in on an Archon here. It cost them one, two, three, four, five cards to cast. They have one card left in hand. It's pretty good for me. They do have a Strip Mine, and I don't have my basic Mountain right now. Or my basic, sorry, my basic Swamp right now. So um, I will have to probably get my Delta Strip Mined. I guess I don't really have to because I can play a pedal as my spell for turn and use the pedal to kill Archon. I mean, that's going to be my play no matter what, right? Is play this Delta, play this pedal. Playing the C doesn't make any sense. And if they like don't strip mine me, then I have access to uh, fetch to a basic. Um, I'm definitely not going to cast this cut down until the end of turn. I don't want my opponent to play more than one spell. If, I don't know if they could have like... They could have like a seasoned dungeoneer in their hand and draw mocks off the top or something like that. No reason to give them extra spells for turn. Uh, as for me, if I don't get wastelanded, I can go dark ritual shieldred um, after I cut down still. And then, I mean, I have a saga too. So this is this. This is a Thalia. Interesting. Uh, yeah, all right. So, in this case, I will just cut down this uh, Archon of Amiria now, and I will have to deal with Athalia, which is not a huge deal. If my opponent strip mines me, it just means I get to play Urza Saga Pearl, and I'm in a great spot making construct tokens. So, it also means they're farther off of having three mana for their spells. So, I'm pretty happy with this spot. So, I get to play Saga, tap it, play Pearl, go to the next. They're, I would say we're pretty favored. Like They need a Wasteland here, probably. They have a Black Lotus, so they can play a 3 or 4 drop now. They don't have one. Okay, that's bad for you. So I have a Dark Ritual, which only makes 1 mana, because there's a Thalia. I think I just make Construct Tokens here, and then we'll go get a Black Lotus and be pretty happy. If they Wasteland me now, I guess there's... 
some problems with the amount of war drops I have in my hand, but they might have hard cast solitude as well, something to consider. But if they end up solituding my construct, then I have a, the a shieldred coming. I'm definitely just making a bunch of constructs. Like constructs are great against mono white. The problem with constructs against mono white is they're normally quite hard to acquire, but um, if you do get them, they're obviously great. Uh, so I could go something. There's no mana vault in this deck. That's interesting. Mana vault's really good with Lorien revealed. I'm kind of surprised there's no mana vault in this deck. Does I assume Sean still plays a mana vault? Oh, I'm just gonna take a quick look while I'm here because Sean does play a mana vault. I know the Power Nine played a mana vault for a while. That's something to consider that we don't have in our list that we might want to add. Anyways, um, no mana vault means that uh, I can't go for like free key. Uh, I could go Black Lotus down. I mean, I like the idea of play Black Lotus attack and then use my Black Lotus to cast two mana Dark Ritual up to four mana play a Shieldred. I think that's more than acceptable. Obviously, this means I'm not, like, casting anything with the rest of my manas, but I kind of also think they have a Solitude. Maybe that makes my play worse. They're certainly stopping here. Interesting. I don't know. That makes that makes me sound like this play is bad, where I'm just going to get um this thing Solituded, but I have a Shield right now. Oh, no, they didn't have anything, so... I have a Shieldred and two Constructs that are 3-3s. Three it can become 4-4s four, four, four next turn. And I have an active Shieldred draining them for two every draw and gaining me two life every draw. I don't really know if Shieldred's actually good against my opponent's deck because they have like main Caracas and Solitudes and random things like that. But it's always nice to have the option when my deck is so combo-centric. So I feel like this was a pretty impressive showing. Um, pretty happy about how this went. A good sign. Okay, second battle, Beseech. I've got, unfortunately, I've drawn the Tendrils in my hand. A Saga Jet, Dark Ritual, Yogwolf Force. This hand just doesn't have cohesion. You basically never want to draw your Yogwolf and your Tendrils. You always want to have them as tutor targets. So definitely kind of um, the quote-unquote oath problem of drawing the wrong parts of your combo pieces. Yogwolf is a little bit better to draw than Tendrils, obviously, because if I had something in this hand like an Ancestral that I could use and, and replay, then it, it makes sense. I guess, like, theoretically, if I we're in a matchup where Saga was good, then I can actually go turn one Saga, Jet, Key, Pass. If I get Wastelanded, I can go Dark Ritual, Yogg will rebuy my Saga. That's actually something to consider. Uh, however, currently, I don't actually have the mana to make Saga tokens. Maybe that doesn't matter, because if my Saga did go to Fruition, then it would get a Black Lotus, which makes this Yogg will better. I don't have a blue card for Force. Uh, I mean, my gut instinct is telling me that this is not a keepable hand, but I think I'm going to keep it for the science of it. So let's try it out. Um, this is like very much a experimental hand in my, my mind where it is like very saga heavy game plan, but you do have a way of mitigating the, the downside of the saga here. Whereas if it gets killed, I have this shock ball. So, all right, I played out all my things. Let's see what happens to me. Obviously, um, if my Saga doesn't get killed, the best thing I can do is just draw into mana. But I actually like enable myself to have lots of good draws because if I draw a blue card, then I have Force back up. If I draw a land or a, mo a, a Moxin, then I have Saga making constructs. And if I draw like a combo-oriented card like Beseech, I actually do still have the like a lethal Beseech right now. So um, there's a lot to like about this hand, actually. A Lorien Revealed is interestingly kind of worse than those things because it doesn't give me a land right away that makes construct tokens and it also kind of, like it fits somewhere in between all of those things that being said would i rather have it holding open force against a non luris polluted delta pearl start or would i rather 
be able to get Black Lotus and like cast it later. If I get a uh, land now, I'm making my land drop for turn and I'm being, giving myself the ability to make a construct next turn, but I'm turning off my ability to force. <laughs> this is a, actually a really interesting spot. I don't know the answer. My gut instinct tells me that I'm supposed to hold this Lorien revealed, which is very odd. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. Is it going to be an underground sea? It is. Is it going to be a bow master? It is. Oh, no, it's a vampiric tutor. Okay, well, now I feel especially vindicated by my choice. Uh, my opponent going Pearl Delta, like, no Luris reveal really incentivizes me to hold force because of possible tinker things. Uh, like, my opponent jams a tinker here. Not having force could be death sentence. I have to try to jam an ancestral here. I still think a force looks really good. Looks pretty weak if they're on four cards. No, they didn't even follow this up with like holding open a fluster or something. So I'm just going to force this. All right. So obviously, I'm not getting construct tokens, which is a big deal. But I have a, like a huge amount of mana. I could theoretically get a Sensei's top and get draw cards going. Uh, I could draw an Ancestral Recall and immediately have a great Yogwill available. So that's a good too. All right. So what I'll do is I'm going to get a Black Lotus off this um, Saga. I'm going to use my Lotus for Ancestral and I'm going to target myself. Hopefully my opponent doesn't uh, negate this. But that means my Yogwill, because this gets just forced or misstepped, it's okay. We get the Yogwill back. Uh, okay, that's, nothing happened. Okay, so I have four mana, six mana, eight mana. So I can actually Yogwill and Beseech if they counter my Yogwill. I mean, they're just super dead, right? Dark Ritual. I guess they could counter this Dark Ritual. But I could Beseech first. Uh, because I can then replay. Yeah, I guess I should Besiege first. I should just straight up Besiege for a, a, a Time Vault first, right? And if they counter it, I Yoggle everything back. Okay, so they had a negation, and they used it on my Besiege, which means... Wow, they held the negation for the Ancestral? I guess they maybe they were worried about a counter spell off of the blue mana or something, and then they just couldn't wait any longer. Uh, so I think I just use all of my blue mana off this Yogwill. And then I have Lotus, Jet. I mean, I have Lethal everything here, right? Because I can just do blue mana, and I have Tendrils in my hand. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wait, maybe this deck is just lit. That was pretty impressive. Uh, still don't really know what my opponent is playing. Oh, we do know what my opponent is playing because they pitched a Oko to negation. So they are either on Oath or they are on Bug. Interesting. Uh, very interesting, actually. I feel like they used to be a Bug player. But... No, they used to be a PO player. Maybe they're a, maybe they're a, an I'm actually level one fan, and they're on Oath now. Okay, if we're playing against Oath, do we have a single sideboard card that's good in this matchup? N needle, <laughs> Needle on Viseju and Oko, I guess. Like we we should have no cards, right? This we have like uh, anti wasteland, anti graveyard. Anti-creature, anti-artifact. No anti-combo. I mean, to be fair, we are three Flusterstorm combo deck of our own in the main. Dress down looks good. Chain looks fine. So we just bring in this needle for Shieldred. What is the use of a Shieldred in this matchup? I mean, theoretically, we could cut this Watery Grave. They're not attacking our lands. I mean, they could have a shirt mine if they're playing my list. What does Shieldred do for us, really? Yeah, I think I'll just cut this Shieldred and just bring a needle in, and we'll run back the same thing, basically. Uh, sweet. What do we got? This hand stinks. 
This hand also stings. I mean, this hand's probably a keep, all things considered. I just cut, uh, keep, put a gar dark ritual away, and then I, at least I have a dress down for show and tell. And then I have like a way to convince my board, and I have a possible storm kill later. Like, I'm not saying this hand is good. I, any hand that has a tendrils in the main is not good, but assuming my opponent is on bug, or sorry, on oath and not bug. If they're on bug, then things are bad, but I think they're going to be on oath. So, this is a brainstorm with no fetch land. So, that's a nice upside here as well. Uh, chain. So, we have two answers. Let's just go mana crypt. And Island Cycle for a C. And then the question becomes, do I play out a Soul Ring for better use of my mana? Yes, because then I can hard cast Dress down as well if I want to. Obviously, the problem with this is it runs into a Vigor, but I don't think I can really play around that. Theoretically, in response to a Vigor, I could Chain of Vapor my own things as well. Nothing from my opponent after brainstorming and playing a trap on turn one. So I have been given time. I'm going to hold all my things. I'm just looking for like a saga, really. Saga is probably what I'm looking for. I'm going to hold this ruby for storm. Don't think I need to advance my mana anyways. Um, there's a world where I hit like two lands, chain all my moxen back, and go for just a natural tendrils kill. Seems unlikely. It's unfortunate my opponent went for a turn one Sapphire Brainstorm play, locked themselves, and they're just going to draw out of the lock, but my hand was a little bit more reactive. I have a force now. They also like, if they play an Oath, I'm never countering an Oath. Not with Dress Down, uh, Force, and Chain in my hand. All right, so here's Blue Red, here's Oath. That's fine. Oath isn't doing anything right now. It's not something I actually have to fight over. They're technically tapped out right now if I can produce a Tendrils kill. I'll have to take a quick peek once we draw a card here. Citadel. Well, that makes life easy, right? We're just going to Dark Ritual and play a Citadel. Yeah. With Force Backup, not bad. They're tapped out. Can't have their two fluster storms. They can have uh, two negation, one trap, four force of will. So they probably have to have double force here. Force pitching show. I think having a dress down is better than having a chain, especially if this resolves. Force pitching a chain. Do they have double? Do they have trap? Let's find out. Yes, so they had trap on top of everything. Um, I can't really beat that so might as well it's also kind of good for me that my, i didn't go all in on some kind of tendrils line and have my opponent trap me at the end uh all right so i have no citadel in my deck it's exiled due to force of negation and mind break trap my opponent is only at five cards it's not like they've advanced their mana so i don't know it was asking my a lot of my opponent's combo oath deck to have double force there so i think it's fine Drawing Beseech is obviously a problem because I don't have that second Dark Ritual. Maybe mistake was had in the beginning of this game when I kept a Dark Ritual number one. I, kept, I didn't. I kept Tendrils over Dark Ritual number two. I didn't see a lot of use for a Dark Ritual number two. So, so my opponent's going to show and tell here. Oh, they're going to tinker. That's really bad for me. I was hoping they were going to show and tell because then I could at least dress it down. But looks like they're going to tinker for a Citadel. People always ask me, do you want to have Tinker Citadel in your show and tell Oath deck? And I think the answer is just very clearly yes. It's very broken. Uh, it's just so, so good. Show and tell off the top. I think they could have a Traxa in their hand. I'm going to put in the dress down off of the show and tell and see what we hit. All right, they didn't have anything. Uh, that's okay. We'll do a brainstorm. And they're bricked off here. If they're bricked here, it means they have a counter spell because it would, or I guess they could have an attraction on top. If they don't want to cast for seven life. Hmm. 
Either way, I'm pretty sure I'm going to brainstorm later when I have more cards. I don't think I want to brainstorm there. If I brainstorm there, opens me up to getting flustered. This tendril can become like a natural kill at some point as well. I think I'm going to brainstorm now here, though. I, I need help. I really need help. Uh, I need to be able to cycle away some of these dead cards. They just have negation on top, I see. Well, letting them have negation is also not good for me, considering I'm trying to win with this Beseech the Mirror, probably. Can't imagine we're in a good spot, but obviously this, this is like one of the worst set of decks, Citadel decks in the format. So We also are dying to our Mana Crypt, which is another small thing. We've drawn three Beseech the Mirrors in a row. This is something that Sean, the Solutionist, has been talking about, how maybe the answer is to play less Beseech the Mirror. You don't really ever want to draw more than one. You kind of want less in your deck. Um, I don't know if that's really a good way to look at it, because this is like your best card, and drawing it and casting it is winning is what winning you what is mostly winning you the game. They drew a Veil of Summer. Good God. Oh, this is not a good for us. It's going to be hard to tendrils my opponent through a Veil of Summer. Um, but, like, there is a, certainly a downside to drawing multiple Beseech the Mirrors and not having access to triple black, so. All right, I mean, Saga's, Saga's fine. So the problem is my tendrils can never actually resolve because my opponent is has a Veil of Summer. This is a hard cast. Besage, is it Besage you? Okay. Besage you that. Turn this into a watery grave, I guess. Okay. I mean, it's a bad spot for sure. All right. So now they have an orchard so they can get an Atraxa off of Oath. Oh, they vigored my two Moxes. They're at six life. If they, like, somehow tap out of green mana, they have a black lotus and triple green sources. I don't think that's happening. And now they have a probe to look at my hand. So I guess, theoretically, I could draw a mana source and go for a natural, like, a small natural tendrils, which they'll veil, and then I could maybe yog will it back. I think that's something that's possible. Um... All right, well, I mean, I'm sure they're going to counter this Dark Ritual, but... It's time to do the do the make them veil this. Yeah. All right, well, I'm at seven. I have, I mean, if they flip it a tracks the right and they don't have a force or a fluster and I hit a black source, I can just beseech for Yogwill and win, right? Mm, not exactly, because I don't have a black source to replay dark rituals. So. Need to draw like a black lotus then. Oh, wait, they didn't flip a uh, oath. Why not? Seemed like a fine flip flip oath. Maybe they just forgot to activate orchard then. Or maybe they have all the attractors in their hand. Then they would just cast attractive though. What was that? Gaia's blessing. Which three cards did they shuffle? Brainstorm, Force of Negation, Sapphire, Strip Mine, but not using it? What is happening? Why am I not dead? They should Strip Mine me. Strip Mine me. Strip Mine me! I don't understand. What is the reasoning behind not Strip Mining me? Is there a possible one? 
They're still not doing an oath thing. Okay, I don't know what's going on. But I also still don't think we're going to win this game. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess maybe they're worried about giving me a 1-1 one -one or something. Or maybe they're worried about milling out because they don't have guys blessing. All right, here's the hard cast Atraxa. So what I thought was going to happen. Uh, so hard cast Atraxa finds them a time walk. All right. Time walk is good enough. Uh, Interesting. They just had uh, the sideboard cards. Negation and Mindbreak Trap are sideboard cards that come in against anti-combo. Oath has got a pretty bad anti-combo matchup in general. Um, but it's definitely winnable. Just going to run this back here. Uh, I've been talking with people about how to make uh, a better Oath um, sideboard for combo. And uh, there's some options. So this hand goes Saga, Lotus, Ritual... Beseech with Bargain off of Saga and cast one, two, three, Yagwil, four, five, six, seven. And then there'd be nothing to yeah, so this is like a Necro or a Ring. It's fine, though. I guess I theoretically could simply DT for something. Just go Saga, Lotus, Beseech for something. I feel like that's worse than getting like a Necro or a Ring in play on turn one. Well, I guess I don't have to teach Dark Ritual at all anyways, because I have exactly five mana. Does that change anything? No. All right, I will put three cards into this Beseech with Bargain on, on the Saga here. I have a Force, so like my opponent has to have Force plus Trap again. This looks like a Necro. That's the only... Op it's the Ring and Necro are my options, right? Yeah. Just get a Necropotence in play and refuel every refuel my entire hand. They're at four, right? Uh, I'm gonna draw down to I'm gonna draw at least eight cards. So I'm probably keeping Dark Ritual and Underground Sea, all things considered, so let's just draw eight. All right, that's very clearly Needle, Mystical, Chain. Gone. No. Hmm. I can have two blue sources next turn if I want. Maybe I just keep this, get rid of this Dark Ritual for now. I mean, maybe the Mystical is better than these cards, but I feel like I need to have these answers to my opponent doing something broken. So the answer to the question is, I think the answer uh, the the answer here is just a slow play, uh, and simply draw two cards here. Play out both my blue sources, draw two cards, then we can go for ancestral on their turn with flusterstorm. Looks fine. There's beseech. I kind of wish I had the dark ritual back. Let's cast ancestral on myself. I wonder about that mystical tutor. Wow, misstep. All right, well, I will fluster your misstep. Hopefully, I don't get um veiled here. Getting veiled here would be really bad for me. Didn't get veiled, but I also didn't draw force. Just fluster. But next turn, I have fluster with ritual. Okay, we're fine. All right, so my opponent's playing Oath down to two cards here, so I should have be able to win the game next turn pretty straightforward. All right, so I can play multiple Beseeches by going Urza, Saga, Dark Ritual, Beseech this, Beseech this, replay everything from my yard and tendrils. Yeah, should be fine. Don't think there's any reason not to... 
I can beseech three times if I want, right? Beseech this necro. I can beseech the spirit token. God, beseech, cast beseech, beseech, cast beseech, beseech, cast beseech off the sapphire. Ooh, everything is collapsing here. Uh, get a Yogwill. Cast a Yogwill. Cast Lotus. Sapphire. Dark Ritual. Beseech. Tendrils. And we win. Uh, wow. Well, okay. I haven't really felt like I've been unhappy with what this deck has been putting together, uh, though I am, I would say, against two matchups that are pretty reasonable and aren't pressuring my mana or my lands or my spells very hard. So let's see what happens if we find like a more controlling deck that has like wastelands and counter spells. Okay, looks like we're back round three. Now we have a rematch versus the mono white player from round one. Uh, we'll see if they're on that again. This hand, I would snap keep with a on color Moxon uh, or even a Lorien revealed so that I could play Dark Ritual, Shielded Ring, or War Beseech, but I have none of those, so I have to mulligan. Uh, here I have an interesting hand. Wow, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. I mean, I know I'm going to put the way the mist up, but what am I going to do with this hand? Um, so I can go Lotus, Necro, Pass, Draw, 10, but I don't know if that's actually good against Mono White. I could go Crack, Lotus, Demonic, Ancestral, Lorien Revealed for an Underground Sea, Cast at Ancestral. But if I'm going Lotus, Crack, for a land and an ancestral, is that better than cracking for a necro draw 10? That's actually not a simple yes, no, one side or the other, I, I don't think, because if I'm playing it's probably mono white, then there's some serious issues. Oh, I also, I guess I need to consider if I think my opponent's on mono white, do I need to mulligan this hand because I die immediately to a chancellor? <laughs> that is. Wow, that is something I hadn't even thought about until right now. Uh, if I if I if I keep this hand and I get Chancellor, I am doing nothing. I wonder if that makes this a mulligan. That might make this a mulligan. If we if we put my opponent on like ninety percent to be mono white, which I think that would be pretty reasonable considering we played them less than an hour ago on mono white, then this hand will simply fold to forty percent of my opponent's hands just by them having a Chancellor. Because Lorien Reveal's not really a land. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to mulligan. So then the question was, if I had kept this, do would I go Necro or would I go Demonic Land Ancestral? I think the answer is Demonic Land Ancestral, considering I have a Besiege in my hand, but I'm not sure. I'm going to mulligan this hand, though. Yeah, this hand is definitely better. Uh, put back one land, one Brainstorm, and leave myself with Saga Sea Force... Tinker. Gonna just play Saga Go and hold open my options. I'd probably force. I won't force a pedal. Pro Mox. The problem is, is if they go land uh, Cavern, if they go land Thalia anyways, it's really bad for me. So I think I'd rather just let them do everything, hope they don't have a cavern, uh, and do it that way because. At the worst case, I can just hit land drops for a couple turns, too. And still have a chance. Maybe I don't, because maybe a uncounterable Archon here is, like, the end of the, the freaking world. Yeah. There's Cavern. Is it Archon? It is Archon. It doesn't really get better for me, though, if I wait, right? Because if they, like, don't play an Archon this turn and they play an Archon next turn, it's I'm still not tinkering next turn.
Oh, wait, why the hell did I do that? I could have gotten my basic I Oh, I don't have a basic island. That's why. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was like, why don't I get my basic island? So per such a simple, simple idea, but the uh, island's in my sideboard. All right, my opponent had a much better hand this time, and I had a much worse hand. Though my opponent didn't have a chancellor, so if I had kept my game, my my other hand, it would have been much better for me. I've got to force this. Can't really let them kill this saga here. Pretty sure this needs to convert into a, a lotus to win this game, or like a, a key if I draw time vault or something. Well, drawing all lands is definitely. Maybe I shouldn't have cycled this Lorien reveal, considering I had a land in hand. Yeah, I think maybe I just played this game like a buffoon. Maybe the answer here is I get to get a Sensei's top and look for an answer. It doesn't seem like a good answer. Oh, I'm so doomed, aren't I? I'm going to get a Sensei's top. Beseech Ritual Spin. Sorry, Procedure Troll Citadel. The, set, the saga going away here is actually actively bad for me. Um, there's just like no world where I want any of these, right? I mean, I, maybe I want Beseech, but play the, this so I can. Oh, I should spin my Beseech to my top. I don't know why I left the Dark Ritual on top. I can never do a Dark Ritual play through Archon, anyways. Yeah, I mean, I maybe I got into my head in this game and, and made mistakes. I think I kind of got into my own head with this. Oh, Wasteland, too. I mean, my opponent had a really great draw, though. Um, pretty tough to beat. All things considered. Maybe the answer here was simply keep my game two hand and, and roll with it. I mean, this game's not over. I, I shouldn't say this game is over because it's definitely still winnable. Dress down is the savior of all combo players, right? This is an initiative creature. Oh boy. Okay. So I take four, go to 10. And then next turn I take nine and go to one. And they have a strip mine too. Okay. All right. My opponent, my opponent's hand was way too good here. Um, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of different things I could have done that maybe would have led me in a better place. Maybe the Dark Ritual Hand was just what we wanted to do. The Black Lotus Hand was just what we wanted to do. Okay, well, losing on the play against this deck is a... While I knew what deck they were playing is a really bad uh, sign, of course. Um, but maybe I, maybe I put myself in my own brain here. Let's go... Fluster Storm's missteps, and what was my last one? It wasn't Shieldred, right? It was, uh... Uh... Oh, Necro, Necro. Well, you, you saw the reason I don't think I like Necro in this matchup, right? Because I just don't... You know, like, getting a random 10 cards might just be not good, right? So what does this hand do? This hand has a force... So I could go Dark Ritual, Demonic, Lotus, Ring. Okay, that's fine. Ritual is plus two, Demonic is plus one. So one, three, one, four. Yeah. Let me just play our Ring out and try to win through that. Have a force and a snuff out to get there as well. Though snuff out and uh, is not a, and watery grave are not really a combination with the ring, but I don't think I have a lot of choices here. Okay, gonna force like most Moxon probably here. Ancient Tomb, Null Rod. All right, super easy force. Draw, gain a life, or lose a life, draw, draw two. Oh, my opponent's off it. Interesting. Ruby for turn, force Lorien off the ring. And then chain for turn, one, two, 
three. <laughs> I don't think my opponent should have conceded. I'm not 100% sure I win that game, but unfortunately I can't uh, make them play magic. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, there's definitely a million ways I can win off of those draws, but like Dark Ritual Besiege is probably just instant win. Uh, but like, I didn't, I didn't draw, those were not the cards I drew. So, okay. So something I, this, this list doesn't have that maybe like a list like Sean's might have is that I only have one chain. I think Sean has a bunch of chains in the board. I don't know. I don't really feel like I want to play more than one chain typically. That card is not my favorite okay so my hand has a force and a million mana but not really any compelling ways to use the mana besides i have a saga that they have to answer i think i would keep this hand if i had a blue card for force because then i can like initiate my saga soul ring plan and it's fine maybe i can still do that because even if they have a chancellor i can still go like saga pearl soul ring mm. i want a mulligan i can just do better all right so i have natural volt key here with a snuff out and one land keep this one though there's a lot of problems with this hand as well looks like they mulligan to five just kind of want to draw lands and mocks in here i guess depends on if what they do too i guess that this hand is pretty weak to null rod i should maybe have considered that i guess i have the answer inside of vampiric chain but hmm I don't know. This feels like a, a hand that I don't want to keep. I don't want to pass up. Technically, with snuff out, if they don't have a null rod hand, I have snuff out plus vamp for lotus for an instant time vault key on turn two. Oh, they revealed chancellor, which is not the biggest deal if they play a creature. Five card hand with a chancellor and the lotus. That's bad and a cavern imagine if their hand is like i guess they only have one more card besides chancellor it's just a thalia Ooh, thalia is actually annoying because of the chancellor because i could pay for a snuff out to kill the thalia if i didn't have to pay for the chancellor but i can't cast any of my other spells because they cost two wow that is uh extremely annoying that is really bad for me. If they draw an Ancient Tomb, they can cast Chancellor too. This Chancellor trigger is like super annoying because I just can't play any of my spells. I have to draw a land here or a Mox. Druid Tendrils. I, I, I can't like just throw a Snuff out at this to get rid of the Chancellor. It still doesn't even unlock me, right? Sorry, I, this doesn't even, it's not even good. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I might lose this game. That's crazy. Any land plays a Chancellor, any creature is bad for me. That is not a land, but they have a Chancellor coming next turn. I'm just dead, right? <sighs> Lorian Revealed is no good. That's wild. So frustrating. London Mulligan. Five card hand. Doesn't matter. Um, so... Okay. So I let this happen. I take two. And then... I was going to say I could draw something and get out, but it doesn't seem like I can. So I can play... Wait, why does it cost three? 
What am I missing here? Shouldn't this cost two? Oh, it does cost two. Okay, so I mean, I can get rid of the Chancellor trigger. But I'm just gonna take a million here. Wow, just this is just a crazy game. Hmm. My first hand would have been an uh, instant win, huh? My first hand, they just simply had no answer to a Saga token and I would win. Maybe we learned a lesson here. Or maybe I, maybe I didn't learn a lesson and I'm just going to be angry about it the whole time. Maybe... I, it's just so hard because like the range in which my opponent's hands could be is so different. So now I can technically resolve a snuff out, but it doesn't help me because I'm dead. I feel like also if I simply drew land land, I would never lose this game, right? Or even Moxon was fine. I did. I do feel like I, I this hand isn't that bad, and I just drew really bad, right? Or am I wrong? Because all they had was a Thalia, and but the Thalia plus one Chancellor trigger made it so I couldn't cast any of my things except for the snuff out. And then if I cast the snuff out, I still couldn't cast anything, so like it didn't actually help me. I don't know. What a weird game. Very odd game. I feel like this one's on me though. All right, we got our good friend Chess Knight across the table, the Zoomer himself. Uh, yeah, let's keep this one. Got a nice turn one Demonic for Lotus for Necro, or more likely Demonic for like a Tinker or something. I don't really think it's worth going all in on some kind of Necro line here on turn one, because it just doesn't feel like that's a good use of my resources into a force of will format. I think the most powerful, like I can't play an Necro on turn two either, but the play that I can make on the next turn that has the least at odds with Necro is just what, Tinker? I think so. So this obviously opens me up to a variety of things, but it also lets me play a powerful turn two play and um, still hold open a, 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 another option on turn three. So instead of going all in on turn one for a Necro, I'm just giving myself a turn two and turn three combo plays. Not that the turn three Necro play is like an immediate win or anything, but Chrome Mox is another mono white player. No, it's oops all spells and we're going to die instead. Okay, well... That's bad. I know Chess has been working on oops all spells and um, and Belcher lines. Um, if we had gone Necro, there's a possibility we could have drawn to a force. So maybe that would have made more sense. Um, they are... Yeah, they have two Narcomoebas pitched, but they have the Spy instead of the other thing. So they have three creatures, assuming there's no uh, Narcomoeba in their hand. There is no Narcomoeba in their hand. They can't therapy me, but they can dread return me, and they can dread return a Thassa's Oracle. So if my opponent had a Thassa's Oracle or an Archimeba in hand, this wouldn't work. They have Chancellors, Sieges. Yeah. Not much I can do besides change my plan to go Necro on turn one and hope to draw force. Like the chance you draw a force off your seven is not unreasonably high, but it's like, you know, it could be like I could draw like these and miss. I mean, I wouldn't have drawn seven, I guess. So that's kind of a moot, moot point. I would have drawn like 12 or 14. So, but my opponent also could easily have had force of will in their hand, right? So let's just do a quick count here. If they have a force here, a force here force here so they don't one so they did have force only well no no one two three so four so they didn't have force in their hand they just had to turn one kill so it's possible that if i had gone with my other line i would have won um i don't know in the blind against an unknown opponent 
I don't really like the Necro line, so. A little here, a little there. I'm going to bring in Ley Lines and Needle. Um, and possibly Hercules if I find a use for it. Uh, I think that I thought one ring doesn't really do very much. Neither does a shieldred. Uh, a dress down could be good for sure. A uh, chain probably is not very useful. Unless they like resolve a belcher and then you want to put it back to their hand or something. I don't think that's very good. Soul ring, uh, one ring. So none of our lands are bad, but maybe we just actually have no need for a watery grave because we're not getting wastelanded. That's probably true. This deck looks like it could easily function on 11 lands with Lorien revealed. That seems fine to me. Uh, and I actually think Necro is good in this matchup, obviously, because they can just we can just uh, draw a million cards, right? So I won't bring in these Hercules. I'll bring in these Ley Lines, and I gotta find room for this Needle. Uh, well, the worst card left in my deck is... Maybe a, a fourth Beseech is not actually fine. Uh, yeah, I think taking out a fourth Beseech here makes a lot of sense. When you, it's it's interesting because my deck is a very heavy combo deck, but when I play this matchup, I'm definitely the control deck, right? This hand is very close to playable, but doesn't have the blue mana or the Lorien revealed. So I can play a, a key. If I had a force in this hand instead of like a brainstorm or a time walk, I would probably keep it just because force, fluster storm, misstep, and then I can draw out into like a powerful volt key play, but I'm going to mulligan this hand. This hand has a ley line, a probe, and a force. This one's probably a keep. Um, I'm gonna just bottom this mystic, uh, this siege, and we'll put in a ley line. So that covered us from something. We have force as well, and obviously we need to top deck our way out of this game. But I think that's acceptable. You always have to keep a force versus my opponent's deck, and at least this does that. Uh, my opponent has quad. Fast mana, double, triple payoff. Okay, well, I'm going to lose this game. So if I force this mana crypt instead, does that leave me in a better spot? Yeah. So I think I'm going to force this mana crypt instead because they have too many payoffs. And hopefully this will hold my opponent back more than these other cards will. Sapphire. Emerald. Hopefully pass. No, they drew a Chrome Box. So they can put the Tinker, uh, Vamp under the Chrome Box and Tinker. So they can Tinker for another Char Belcher. I mean. I can obviously wait, but if I wait, then they just simply play a Char Belcher this turn, and I counter it, and then on the next turn they play a Char Belcher. Oh, they went Citadel and Bricked? They must have a Pact or a Force on top. I thought they would go for another Char Belcher. Oh, I guess they don't have the mana for a Char Belcher. I guess that makes sense, right? All right. Well, that's good for Justin, but... I mean, I don't have anything left, so... <laughs> yeah... I don't know. Chancellor off the top. Well, I guess they could have bricked by, like, a spy. I mean, they could have just cast a spy and target me, right? So. All right. Well, now they can play a Char Belcher. Tendrils. Interesting. What an interesting build. Some kind of Beseech Oops hybrid deck. Definitely still like Leyline against this. They force the tendrils so they can keep going. Now they have enough to Char Belcher and activate next turn. Oh, I guess they didn't have enough Char Belcher before. My, my apologies. Yeah, I won't be able to draw out of this. There's nothing that draws me out of this. So. Packed it and forced the pact. I would not have done that. I would have... Just cast my Char Belcher and been happy enough with that. And then we have a Char Belcher and a Pact. So that that last one didn't make sense. That you should definitely just play your Char Belcher and hold up in your Pact. But it's not it's not gonna matter, so it doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, I've been bested in the arena of ideas.
Okay, here we go. Fifth and final round of this league. It's been a little bit of up and a little bit of down. Deck has performed well. I had some questionable choices along the way. I feel like we could have drawn more Lotuses. That would probably help a lot. Though I guess I mulliganed a hand with a Lotus out of turn one Necro, so maybe I can't keep playing and just got to keep my Lotus's hands and, and let it ride. This hand has our removal spell and our storm card in it, which makes me really, really not want to play it. However, it does play out. I have the ability to play Sensei's Top, have an Academy, look for an answer. I mean, I just, I, I can't, like, this hand isn't good, right? But is this hand a mulligan? I guess that's my question. And I'm not sure, I don't know the answer. I'm going to try it because uh, it seems like it's in, it seems like a hand that would possibly fit inside of the range of hands I was willing to keep, but it doesn't seem like a hand that I'm happy about keeping. So um, it's definitely worth keeping those kind of uh, hands when you're playtesting, right? When you're playtesting, one of the big things you're doing is you're trying to narrow and determine your best possible range of keeps. And if you don't try hands that you think are on the outskirts of that range, then you will never learn if they, uh, they work out the way you'd like them to. Uh, I kept a hand this weekend in... Uh, the New York New York City event where it was like on the draw versus blue black as oath and it was like Besage ancestral probe for I mean, it was it was very all in hand that didn't have all the pieces but it felt like it was a hand that should keep and ha give myself a, a a chance to win games um, those are definitely the most interesting some of the most interesting parts of Magic and then the places where you can learn the most. My opponent follows up my watery grave sensei's top with a little bit more powerful underground sea sensei's top. They also probe to see what I'm doing. Um, I've drawn a saga off the top, which looks good here. Gives me a clock, though I currently don't have any um, forces for my opponent's combo spells. Um, I do have at least have a chain. Could maybe help with, you know, problematic permanent or something, but. Probably not super good in the Underground Sea Sensei's Top Mirror Chain. Could be used later on in this game to up the storm count, but we'll have to see. Uh, Saga makes me change my idea of what I'd like to play in this game. Now I'm now I'm looking at something like play Saga, uh, play Academy, make constructs. Whereas before I was looking at something like Dark Ritual, Lorien revealed. Opponent's going to start sculpting their hand with an active top and a fetch land, six cards in hand, and they know all of the cards in my hand, which is very, very hard for me to deal with. Uh, but at the very least, I have an active saga, which can pressure my opponent into to start making choices. So uh, Even a simple pair of constructs here can really threaten my opponent. Um, the tendrils can probably cut down the clock by a single turn as well, which is really, really helpful. Looks like my opponent has found a card they are interested in and are going to use their top and then fetch away. I don't know what that means. Oh, so my opponent's on Oath then. So my opponent found something worth keeping and then decided that that's enough. So maybe it's an Ancestral or something. I'm not sure. One thing we can do here is if our top doesn't look good, we can cycle Lorien. Wow, Beseech and Time Vault. So Time Vault is a must counter. And Beseech can be lethal after. This looks great. I don't think we're going to make Constructs, especially if our opponent's on Oath anyways. I feel like I'm getting Ancestral, but we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to play out my Academy and then play my Time Vault. I guess maybe I'm supposed to leave the black mana in case I want a ritual after. But this is a must force. Like, I have a key coming off of this saga. And next turn, I'm drawing a Beseech. So... We've got lots of good options here. Though I guess if my opponent show and tells an Atraxa, things are kind of bad for us. But 
Yeah, so it was ancestral. I figured that would make the only play where my opponent cracks a uh, uses a top and cracks a fetch makes sense. I guess I still can spin here and theoretically hit a force. No key. So now I have to choose whether I'd rather draw beseech the mirror or key. Because if I draw key, I can technically go black lotus. Well, I can go both. I can draw both still. Let's be honest. My opponents use one of their five forces. I am weak to fluster storms. Strip mine. Wow. 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 What did I put on top? A siege. Okay, that's fine. Just go for it, I guess. Strip mine's so good here. This is an innovation that only I, I mean, not only I start or not only I'm playing now that people have copied my list, but this is um something I added to my deck of oath for the BCDL uh, event that I won. And I think it really, really helps tie the deck together. Having this option is very important. Being able to kill X Krakus is extra easy. Have answers to Saga or um, Bizarre. Feels like this, if you're not playing your strip mine, and I think actually most decks now should be playing a strip mine. Um, even like your Tinker Saga deck should be playing a strip mine. It just feels like it's a necessary part of the game. You've seen how the decks in the format are gravitating towards uh, Wasteland decks. And I think Strip Mine is um, a lot less painful than playing the full five. So it looks like my opponent has found either an Oath with an Orchard, when Flusterstorm back up, or a Show and Tell. I know that I have a Beseech on the top of my library, so I can't even put a thing into play. Okay, Traxa. So if this Traxa doesn't hit a force though, this game is still live and winnable for us. This Traxa did not hit a force. Notably, it did hit Black Lotus Besaju, which could be problematic. So I kind of want to draw the Beseech. But I do have this Spirit token now that I can actually sacrifice to my Beseech. So I don't actually need to have a Sensei's Top. Um, one thing I don't have is extra black mana for post. I think we need a Citadel here, right? Well, I guess this Beseech would stop our Citadel plan. Wow. I mean, we dodged a Force, which we have to be much very thankful for. But... This could be problems, too. So they kept Oath, Oko, Atraxa, Mystical, Besiege you, Lotus. All right. Yeah, I mean. We'll have to see if my opponent uses this Besiege you early or not. Though I guess if my opponent Besiege you something, uh, then I could maybe replay that land out of my yard as my Black Source. Mm, I'm not sure this com combines for a win currently is the problem. Maybe my opponent here just plays Oath plus Besaju because they know I have a chain, right? Maybe I chain this Black Lotus and that gives me the opportunity to tinker. But I need another, mo I need another mana for that. Frig! Ah, that's so bad for me. Oh wait, here they go. They're going to do the Oath Besaju line. Okay, so do I want to draw into my Beseech? I have to. I really have to. The problem is now I don't have an artifact to tinker. Okay, I thought this might be the play my opponent chose to do. An interesting thing here is I could chain my spirit token to put a shieldred into play. And then, so I have like lots of options here because my opponent, I know four, I know three of my opponent's five cards or something like that. If they don't have a force in their hand. So I could chain their Atraxa, but that just doesn't, I could chain their Atraxa and actually gives me a turn because I, I don't need to change their Atraxa. I don't really need to change, chain their Atraxa at all. 
I could cycle this Lorien Revealed, which is going to give me another land. Um, uh, I could chain, I, I could chain, throw, like, if I chain into Shieldred, and I don't mill over my Yogwill, then I can Dark Ritual Beseech my, oh, actually, what is Bargain? No, I can't do that. I was going to say I could bargain my shield, but I can't do that. I kind of need the spirit token to do that. So is the answer cycle Lorian revealed to give myself another land, which lets me at least cast... Promises at least lets me cast Dark Ritual again from my yard, but that's not actually good enough, right? I mean, I can do more things on my turn anyways, so let's, let's just cycle. I think I'm supposed to draw that Besiege, but I also think... I need an artifact that that Sensei's top represents. So it's very tough. Definitely have to get a land off of the Besaju. So Moxin is my best draw, probably. Okay, so now I can go Tinker Citadel. So now I can go Sapphire, Dark Ritual, Beseech my spirit token. Go for Tinker. Cast Tinker off my Sapphire. Tinker out of Citadel. Jet. Beseech wins. All right. Yogg will this. Wow. My opponent went for that line with Black Lotus there and lost because of it. I don't, I'm not saying that's incorrect. I did have to top deck the Mox for this to work, but pretty impressive. Maybe I maybe I do like this deck. It's pretty it is fun when it works. It's it's a lot of not fun when it doesn't work, but maybe that was the same with PO and I'm just being uh nostalgic and and rose colored glasses and all those things so the only thing i did last time we played against oath is i brought in needle right i don't even think needles like that good but i think it's fine and i don't really need this watery grave anyways oh i, I could have taken out shieldred that's why i took out not watery grave yeah i mean the shieldred is pretty bad right i don't really feel like the shieldred is actually does anything in this matchup they have three draw spells in their deck. Oko. Yeah, it's not very good. Hmm. I can make this matchup better, too, if I really wanted to, but I don't know how much I want to. It's already a pretty decent matchup as it is. So this hand has, man, this hand is just not not it. But I do have a beseech with something. I guess this needle is something I can tinker off of if I want to. Mm, holds open fluster for show and tell lines. I think this hand in general is not typically something I'd want to be keeping in this matchup. But again, it's probably close enough that I should be trying. We'll see what happens. Sapphire, good start. Oath. Is it just an oath? Turn one oath? No, that's black mana. So demonic, I assume. Okay. So that means they get oath or... Hmm. Maybe they get counter magic if they have something in their hand already. Maybe they have a show and tell and they get Atraxa. Probably not. I probably would still just get oath at that point. Good start, though, for sure. What's my best draw? It's always Black Lotus, right? It's just always Black Lotus. It's crazy. This deck is probably one of the best Black Lotus decks I've ever seen. It just uses it so well, right? Not that, you know, like, most decks that have Black Lotus are, you know, Black Lotus is good in, but, like, this deck definitely goes up another level. I think it's better for me to just... 
I guess this gets me strip mined like an idiot, but whatever. It's fine. I was like wanting to put a land in my yard and get lands out of my deck, but I should never have really done that right then, right? I mean, if they were saging me, that's fine too. Like, it's not actually hurting me. Strip mine, I guess, is hurting me, but I don't think my. I guess my opponent would. I probably would take strip mine out of my deck, but maybe you would leave it in. Oh, wow. They actually are going to go for um, show and tell here. I am very surprised. I think if my opponent has a DT, I would DT for. Um, I would just DT for, for Oath. But I mean, maybe you DT'd for force. It's possible. I mean, I still don't have a lot going for me, but I actually have a beseech. These tokens are really bad uh, uh, for the oath player because I can just beseech them, uh, which means I can actually here I could go needle. I guess I can't go Tinker because I don't have enough mana. So I can Beseech if I want to or Necro maybe or the Ring. Ah, I tried to I tried to attack. It just didn't let me. Uh... Yeah, I mean, let's do it. Oh, they have force for dark ritual. Okay, that's fine too. Leaves me with this still. Pitching Atraxa. Okay. They already used the Besaju, so I'm just going to name Oko. Obviously, I forgot that attack. It shouldn't be relevant, but it might. Two cards left in hand. Brainstorm after playing a land. Doesn't make sense. Just play the Brainstorm first. Gives you more options. Looks like they found another show until anyways. Oh, they found a Narset. All right, Narset, no good here. I have all these spirit tokens. Uh, actually very relevant that my opponent countered my Dark Ritual and not by Besiege, because my Besiege would have killed a Spirit Token, and now I can straight up kill Narsa. Uh, so it's actually quite important, interestingly enough. Though my opponent just revealed Mental Misstep off of Narsa, and I drew Jet, which is probably like the second best card in my deck besides Lotus, right? Because Jet lets me go Tinkering now. Maybe it's not even tinkering now. Maybe the answer here is... Um, so I can beseech... Beseech four times. So one, two, three, four, five. Into... Yogwill, six. Jet, seven... Ritual 8, I'm sure, because I don't have a fourth mana after. I could just go Talarian, uh, Lorian. I could go Beseech Tinker with no land drop to give. Yeah, I mean, I like Beseech Tinker, no land drop to give, I think. Cast this with Bargain off a of Spirit Token. Half the negation as the last card. Okay. My opponent has zero cards, so I'm in a great spot. I have Lorian next turn. Don't think I'm making a construct. It doesn't really feel like that's how I'm winning this game. I mean, I can. I'll still have enough. Hmm. Uh, I don't see a reason to play a construct. I'm not winning by attacking here. What is this? Can't needle you, friend. I'm going to get a Black Lotus because it's going to give me the most options. And then... This doesn't hold anything up anyways, right? They still have negation. They can't play force. 
It's fine. I can just do this now. I still have floating mana. Okay. Question becomes, do I want to tap out? Nah, there's no reason to tap out here. I'll just wait till next turn and do it again. Lorien revealed to Larian Academy is something else. Probably could easily have drawn Fluster for turn two, so. Uh, okay. I, this actually stops a show and tell Atraxa here as well, so that's pretty nice. A lot of good things happening. My opponent's best draw is obviously Oath. Drew the best draw. Does help you win a lot. All right. I mean, I still think we're favored. All right. That's, that's going to do it here. Uh, need to play around. I don't need to play around Mind Break Trap, actually. So I can simply... I mean, I can just do the Beseech for it, because I can then I can have Force and Fluster. I, I don't need to do that, but, like, whatever. It's fine. Just use the Spirit Token for fun. Just going to get a Time Vault. Cast Time Vault with Force Fluster back up, and we got a win here. This matchup's really bad for Oath. Like, the, you can win on Oath, but, like, it's it's quite bad. All right, 3-2. Um, 3-2, deck was pretty strong. I had some, some questionable keeps in the name of Science and some questionable plays in the name of Weak Magicians. Um, I don't think I have any comments on the deck configuration. It seemed to map fine, and we didn't, obviously, we didn't hit our six-card anti-bizarre sideboard. We hit the mono-white four-card sideboard twice, and then the basics coming in didn't actually matter at all, but they would definitely have been good uh, there. We just missed out on all Wasteland decks, right? Well, not all Wasteland decks, because I guess Mono White's a Wasteland deck, but we said we, we didn't play any against bl any blue Wasteland decks, which is um, a hole in the testing section here. The Ring was good once. Shieldred was good once. So those look fine. The only question in the main I have is um, Mana Vault. Is there a way we can fit a Mana Vault in? Is it worth it? I guess another question I have is, is For Beseech correct? I think the answer is... Trending to yes, but it's still a viable question. And then, yeah, I'm going to play a couple more leagues with this deck. I don't know how many I'm going to record, but probably it's a decent amount of them I will record and uh, see if I can keep my options open for Eternal Weekend for a Tinker deck. I will have to work on trying to figure out how to get some of these cards in time, but it's definitely something that could happen. If you are enjoying this content, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, more vintage content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this YouTube channel. I will see you then.